Welcome back. As you know, I'm Eli the Computer Guy here for the Daily Blob, where, in fact, we actually do talk about real technology every once in a while. I mean, let's be honest, not very often, but every once in a while we talk about real technology. So I think this is an interesting story today uh, about Huawei actually coming out with storage products uh, to try to optimize uh, AI solutions. So one of the big things to be thinking about uh, when you're, whenever you're going to actually be deploying artificial intelligence solutions within your organization is to think about the systems architecture, right? The thing that makes me so excited systems and architecture. How are you going to build uh, all of that hardware? How are you going to connect the systems uh, so that you optimize uh, for the results? One of the interesting things nowadays is whenever we talk about artificial intelligence, it all comes down to GPUs. GPUs, 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 right? NVIDIA, $40,000 Blackwell GPUs, and that's what everybody like hyper focuses on. One of the things I tried to explain to you folks, right? They're the reality of how systems actually work is the, the GPUs that NVIDIA produces. Don't get me wrong. They're amazing. They're amazing. No snark with those. But they're not the only thing that's required for artificial intelligence. And in many ways, they're not actually even needed uh, for certain artificial artificial intelligence solutions, right? We talked about uh, Grok. Grok is not the Twitter Grok, it's a different Grok, because none of these fuckers can be original about their names. Anyways, there's a company out there called Grok, and they're actually creating uh, processors just for inference. And so we talk about inference. What inference is, is once you have a model, once a model has already been trained for artificial intelligence, inference is using that model uh, to get results, right? So we talked about this where basically uh, there's this uh, Grok company, uh, they're out of Europe, uh, they're building data center, they can build an entire data center in something like five weeks, something that's absolutely ridiculous, uh, but it's all about simply inference, right? If you're trying to run models, then you'll use one of these Grok processors that they have, right? You're not gonna use an NVIDIA thing. And one of the things to consider is as you start thinking about these AI systems, there's a lot that goes into it, right? You've got the LLM and you've got the model and all that kind of thing, uh, but then you've also got database solutions and you've also got storage solutions and you've also got you know, uh, how everything is going to communicate. It's interesting, you know, like IBM, IBM is really pushing this idea of kind of like the LLM stack, of like an actual stack of LLM. So you'll use five LLMs LLMs, just LLMs, to come up with a solution, right? So you'll you'll make a request, you'll basically ask a question, you'll have one specialized LLM that will try to determine what the hell it is that you're asking for. And then you'll have the next LLM that will try to determine what resources are available to try to uh, give you a response. And then you'll have like another LLM that brings uh, the information from those repositories in to basically craft uh, the basic idea of what the response would be. The next LLM would then try to clean that up to, to, to make it something that's that's useful for you, maybe translate it into a different language, that type of thing. And then the final LLM might be a security LLM just to make sure you're not misgendering somebody or something, right? Anyways, right, there's a whole stack of LLMs there. And that, so that's one of the important things to consider when you're thinking about these, uh, these AI platforms or solutions, you're gonna be deploying this to your organization, is how does all of this come together uh, to provide, uh, you know, an actual useful thing. Uh, so what's interesting here with Huawei is they're actually coming out with new storage devices. So you don't really think about that, right? With, with LLMs, right? You think about GPUs, you might think about RAM, you might think about bandwidth or whatever else. But remember, crap has to get stored somewhere. Not only does like the inputs and outputs have to be stored somewhere, but the LLM itself, like it's one of those things that it's very easy to kind of forget, but the LLM actually has to get stored somewhere too, right? We're all dealing with files. So anyway, so Huawei is unveiling new storage. Uh, Tech War. Huawei unveils drive storage products to help AI computing. And I think this is also interesting too, as we see with Huawei, as we see with China, pushing forward and trying to solve the problems that they can, right? One of my biggest concerns with the idiotic policy that the United States has uh, towards uh, China, as far as artificial intelligence is concerned, is the fact of the matter is many times when we develop technologies, we, we do not end up deploying 
uh, selling, deploying, maintaining the best, the best the technology could be, right? We end up uh, deploying uh, the best that was able to be replicated and scaled uh, at the time, right? That's, that's one of the reasons you'll see like with operating systems and a lot of stuff we talk about legacy, where literally even now, even IPv4 for Christ's sakes, right? Ether, Ethernet standard, right? We have these standards, fuck me. These standards came out 40 or 50 years ago. And why are we stuck with it? As I, as I said, you know, I've talked about it before, back in 2000, back when I was 2000, when I was getting my MCSE and NT4.0, uh, my, my instructor apologized to us. One of, the, one of the tests that we had to take, so the MCSE was five standard tests and two elective tests. And one of the tests my program had us go through was TCP IP4. And literally my instructor actually lamented, he was apologetic that we were going to spend all this time to learn TCP IPv4 because IPv6 was right around the corner. I'm sorry, you're going to spend a month learning all this stuff about IPv4 when in a year or two, IPv4 is going to be obsolete and everybody's going to be on V6, but it's the world we're in, ergo, you got to take the test. And so I took the test <laughs> and we're still using IPv4 because that's how technology works, right? So one of the interesting things, when we think about AI, think about artificial intelligence, is a lot of the systems we have in the United States, a lot of systems we have in the Western world, are not necessarily the best way to do shit. Like, seriously, I'm not being snarky about that. It's just, just how stuff gets built, right? If you put a billion dollars into R&D to create a certain product, and it works, and it, it look, it legitimately works, right? But you realize as you build it, crap, if we architected this slightly differently, we could have a 50% uh, increase in energy efficiency or something else, right? But the thing is, you already put a billion dollars in this R&D. So it's like, are you gonna put another billion dollars to create something entirely different? That will be better. Or are you just gonna start shipping the thing that you already built, right? You start shipping the crap you already built. Well, the curious thing is, right, and so in the technology world, that's what happens, right? We, we use an incredible number of systems that <laughs> functioned 10 years ago, and we're continuing to use them today, and by God, our grandkids will still be using these crappy-ass systems because they weren't good enough back in 2005 or whatever. The curious thing to be thinking about with this whole dynamic between the United States and China is what happens if you force somebody to go back to the drawing board with the current lessons learned, right? We already have the lessons learned of NVIDIA. We already have the lessons learned of AMD. We already have the lessons learned of Grok, that, 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 that processor company, right? We have, we have 20 years, 20 some odd plus more years of all these lessons on designing and building AI hardware. We know what worked really well. We know what doesn't fucking work. We knew what worked, but at the time it was too expensive, so they didn't go down that route. And so now, now China, because we are no longer selling them the hardware, we refuse to sell them the hardware, right? Instead of them getting locked into legacy, not addicted, not addicted, you never fucking say addicted to the China man. Legacy is the word. Once you make that shit legacy, legacy is there forever, right? But here's the thing, here's the thing. We're not allowing we're not allowing our systems to become legacy in their environments. So then they have to go back to the drawing board and they have to think, okay, with what we understand now in 2025, how will we build AI systems? And I think that's what becomes very fascinating. It's gonna be a number of the things that I talk about today. Anyways, is fascinating is when they go to the drawing board and they start thinking, about how would you engineer for 2025? And this is why America is gonna get fucked. Is <laughs> because they're going to start designing per 2025 standards, while our shit is still designed per 2005 standards, because that's how technology development works. And where do you think that is going to lead us in 2035? But anyways, 
So that's where this Huawei unveils drive storage products to help AI computing. Right? If you can't get the super fast GPUs, if you can't get the NVIDIA GPUs, the Huawei Ascend or whatever, Aspire, whatever their GPUs aren't quite up to snuff, where are the other bottlenecks in the system? Where can you tweak other things in the system to try to pull out additional uh, resource efficiency? Huawei Technologies has launched new memory products that can improve the efficiency of artificial intelligence computing in the company's latest effort to double down on its hardware business. The three AI solid state drive of products, Ocean Disk EX560, Ocean Disk SP560, and Ocean Disk LC560, are aimed at solving bottlenecks faced by data centers in AI training and inference, including slow inference speed and limited data, uh, data uh, capacity, the company said at a launch event in Shanghai. At the event, Huawei said uh, it would work with several partners, including Data Storage a Committee of uh, China Electronic Standardization Association, blah, 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 to launch an AI SSD uh, Innovation Alliance, which will push for industry uh, collaboration and innovation. And notice this too with Huawei. Huawei is coming out and saying, hey, how can we work together to start building these types of systems? Uh, the move is the latest sign that the Shenzhen-based uh, uh, tech giant is doubling down on its efforts to develop a comprehensive ecosystem in AI technology amid surging demand for related services and a US-China tech war. The launch of the new products comes as the AI industry hits both a capacity wall and a memory wall in its data centers. According to Zhu uh, Yufeng, a, a Huawei vice president, uh, quote, uh, the first problem is that the amount of data needed for training is getting really large, as Zhao said on Wednesday. Quote, how to store and use this data with high efficiency and low cost remains a challenge for us. So that's one of the things to think about. Like, as these models get bigger and bigger and bigger, it, like, like, we can have massive questions about how big these models should get, but they're only going to get bigger. Why? Because bigger's better, maybe. So anyways, right, you know, Llama. Llama came out with their 460 billion parameter uh, model uh, not that long ago. And so what's kind of interesting to think about is, is if they start building larger and larger models, you know, a trillion parameter model or multi-trillion parameter model, one of the things to consider there is you've actually got to store that data somewhere. Do you have the data storage arrays, capacity, speed to be able to feed the data efficiency into your your training systems. Um, let's see here. Uh, it gets really large. How to store and use this data with high efficiency and low cost remains a challenge for us. Uh, Ocean Disk EX560 and SP560, which are touted as, quote, the fastest SSD products in the industry, seek to improve the performance of memory products in data centers and serve as expansions to high bandwidth of memory products. Uh, Ocean Disk LC560 focuses on expanding data storage capacity as it has the, quote, largest single drive capacity in the industry. The product, which has a maximum capacity of 245 terabytes can improve data pre-processing efficiency by 6.6 .6 times and reduce space usage by 85.2% when used in AI training clusters. So basically, theoretically, with this, you can improve speed and you can uh, diminish uh, storage utilization uh, by using their drives. And so I think this is going to be one of the things that's coming down the pike and is going to be interesting to take a look at is seeing is seeing what new hardware and what new hardware solutions come down the pike uh, for this uh, AI optimized enhanced world uh, and the whole idea of, you know, is, is the GPU the most important thing? I think about this with, uh, with uh, drives, right? Uh, so I had, a, I, had a, I had a computer, so, right? I built myself uh, when I started my little consulting company consulting company. Anyways, I was making money. I built myself a fancy new computer, shoved in a lot of RAM into it, gave it a good processor, shoved in an IDE drive. And, you know, it was fine. It was fine. It was faster than other computers, but, you know, it really wasn't that big a deal. And the interesting part was at that time, like everybody was focused on RAM, 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 RAM. Nobody was shut up about RAM. You need more RAM in your computer. But it's like, I looked at the, the hardware utilization and I didn't need more RAM. But the computer is fine. And so anyways, uh, at that point, uh, the motherboards that were coming out uh, would come out with uh, controllers, drive controllers for both IDE hard drives uh, and for SATA hard drives, right? So anyways, 
uh, at some point, I was like, well, I've heard these SATA hard drives are better, uh, so I'm just gonna go get myself a SATA hard drive, install the OS on that, and run it from, from that. And basically, when I installed the SATA, so not SSD, the SATA is the, the controller, the connector, and when I installed the SATA drive, oh my God, the speed of that system was just blazing fast. I mean. 2007 blazing fast, but blazing fast, right? I didn't need a bigger processor. I didn't need more RAM. Literally changing the hard drive controller that I was using on the motherboard was a thing that just revolutionized my computing experience. Again, you go from that to solid state drives, that makes things better. Uh, you know, this is where we've seen with computers uh, over the years, is always like this push and pull uh, between the different uh, components, uh, the different hardware components, right? Is the CPU the most important thing? Is the, the memory, the, the RAM the most important thing? Is the GPU the most important thing? Is the storage the most important thing? And depending on your particular use cases, uh, you know, different different hardware resources may be more or less valuable. Also, making sure you optimize the performance uh, of the, um, the, the the resources, like with RAM, right? So when people talk about RAM, they generally, at least back in the day, used to talk about the size of the RAM. 16 gigs, 32 gigs, whatever, right? I've got so many gigs of RAM. But uh, even within the, uh, oh, even within the, whatever, the DRAM 3, DDR3 RAM or whatever, there's different speeds of RAM. And so the speed of the RAM is how fast the RAM can actually push uh, bits and bytes into and out of that stick, right? So literally, uh, depending on what you're doing, you might not need more RAM, right? Let's say you have 16 gigs of RAM in your system and you're like, oh, to make my computer run better, I need 32 gigs of RAM. Well, here's the thing. If you look at the actual hardware uh, utilization on your system, you might only be using 10 gigs of RAM. So having 32 isn't bad, it's not like that's bad, but you're only using 10 gigs of RAM. So you've actually got six gigs of RAM free. So that's not really your bottleneck, that's not really your problem. Literally upgrading the quality of the RAM that you have in your system, going from the, the, the crappy ass, you know, generic 16 gigs of RAM that you currently have up to a better, you know, higher quality, higher speed RAM, that's the exact same size, that might actually get you the performance boost. And so it's gonna be curious to see as people build more and more of these AI, oh, solutions, right? And start architecting things, uh, the whole question of where is the actual bottleneck is the bottleneck where you think the bottleneck is and where is it most appropriate to spend money on your resources. So anyways, I just thought this was kind of curious. Again, Huawei coming out with AI specific storage, supposedly the largest in the world and the fastest in the world. What will that mean at the end of the day? Eh, who the hell knows? But I do think it's kind of interesting to be looking at with this whole AI story. Uh, so what are your thoughts? What are your thoughts about this? <laughs> how, how is the winning going for you? Do you wake up in the morning as American and go, wow! It's so nice to win again. Is that, is that how you feel? Is that how you feel? I don't know. Put your thoughts uh, down below. Give us a thumbs up. Give us a thumbs down. Say I'm amazing. Say I'm a moron. Just say it down below. And with that, see y'all later.